the Cranky Geek Fall 2021 show is possible thanks to our sponsors Google, Agora, Daily, Dolby IO, Element, Intel, and Ring Central. See the links in the description for more information. Our next and our final speaker, but uh, is a repeat speaker uh, and one of our favorites, uh, Arno. Uh, from Ring Central, Arno, I'll let you just uh, take it away. Hi, um, thank you, Chad. My name is Arno Bikiewicz. I'm Senior Director of Engineering at Ring Central and W3C member. Along the way, I built five different products and platforms based on WebRTC. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about my experience delivering an electron based desktop application that heavily use WebRTC. People love app on mobile, an average person has 40 apps installed on their mobile. Um, but in most cases, they only use 18 of them. On desktop, uh, though, even if both Apple and Microsoft have their app store to extend user appetite for apps, the behavior is different. And businesses want full control on what their users install on their devices. WebRTC runs in browsers, but what if you want to build a desktop app out of your web application? Two options are available. PWAs, progressive web applications, a quick and easy way to distribute your existing web app on stores. Um, I get it installed on PC and Mac, but most popular one remains Electron. You're in good company with Electron Visual Studio. Code is a reference, but RTC applications, if you find uh, Slack, Messenger, WhatsApp, Teams, Discord, and of course, Ring Central, it's a good sign that you know you can trust this, this framework. So what is Electron, really? Uh, the simplest way to build from a web app, a desktop app for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Electron is Chromium, WebRTC is inside, plus Node.js. So your application is a function of Electron, the version you pick, your web app, and eventually your native modules. Your dependency tree is Electron app as a container for your web app coming with your native and Electron modules and a specific version of Chromium within WebRTC. So what can go wrong um, with Electron? Well. Your web app has one more browser to support your Electron app. In the case of our desktop client, it triggers a different screen sharing implementation, different portion of code, different features. This browser is always older than the latest Chrome or Edge, of course, and it's not 100% exactly one or the other and must be integrated and tested with our native modules. Your native models expose one API to your web app, but have different implementations on Windows, on Mac, hardware specificities like GPUs. Your native models usually work with only one given major version of Electron. So it has to be tested multiple times as a component with an integration test app and to add with multiple versions of your web app. Another pain point is the upgrades. Both your web app and your Electron container can be upgraded separately, but they have different methods of deployments, obviously. An app server upgrade for one, the distribution of an IT package for the other. An upgrade of your Electron app will probably require a restart to reload the native module and expose the new API. So there is a solid upgrade experience to build, to not disrupt the user, and guiding him through the upgrade process. Another pain point is the dependency management. When things go wrong, there is a complex onion to debug, and you may need to talk to different open source communities. For Electron, you will need to report on GitHub, use Slack and Discord to socialize and discuss it. Um, bear in mind that uh, the communities support only three versions. Chromium, it has its own bug tracker, obviously, and Electron can cherry pick a few minor releases um, of the same version of Chromium. If you're facing a WebRTC issue, that's the hardest one. 
um, you need to touch all the layers and discuss with the three communities. So it's very important to understand the entire release cycle. And Chromium has just moved to a release every four weeks. So Electron has to change its cadence from 12 to eight weeks now, picking every even number of Chromium. Fortunately, Electron increased the <clears throat> supported Electron version from three to four, but only until May next year for Electron 19. More frequent releases means smaller releases, and you will get Chrome fixes and features quicker. As an example, Electron 16 has been released two days ago. It comes with Chromium 96, and supported versions are 13 to 16. Again, in May 2022, the Electron community will support only 17, 18, and 19. Now, let me give you a real example of bug tracking we experienced. So, VP8 is an excellent codec for video, but for screen sharing in the context of business meetings, when people mostly share presentation and expect the remote participants to see a crisp image, our research proves that X264 provides a better quality than VP8. Among others, this issue was in our way to use X264 for screen sharing. Now, how to define the release train of the fix in WebRTC, Chromium, and then Electron? Well, first, you need to find the patch submission. Get the commit hash from the patch submission. And in the issue tracker, you, if they are linked together, you will find the comment from BugDroid. Enter the commit hash into C dash, an application that is provided for free uh, by the community, and voila you have exactly the number you're looking for. Sometimes there is a backport in the current stable release, like in this example. Just repeat the same steps, and you have the minor release in C dash. Yeah. Was, it, was that easy to figure out? Yeah. <laughs> now, where this commit landed in Electron? That's the next question. Well, a quick look at the major release nodes will tell you which version to look at, in the current example, Electron 11. Then you can find the release notes of the minor releases and uh, look at the exact version that you need. Sometimes Electron also cherry picks some Chromium patches, but mostly they are related to security. Now that you master WebRTC bug tracking in Electron and Chromium, um, let's talk be best practices. Test, 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 test your upgrades, combinations, your backward compatibility, test your performance, your media quality during dev, regression, production. Also test Electron beta versions, just like you test beta canary version of Chromium for your web app. Upgrade as fast as you can on the latest Electron stable version. And go with a custom Electron strategy only if you have the resources dev, and QA. Contribute back. You don't want to maintain your own bill for too long, so report issues early. Use tools like the very handy BSEC Python script that let developers find the exact version of Chromium that introduced the bug they are facing. And for more information, you <clears throat> I recommend this video on WebRTC course from Tahi. Also, contribute by testing experimental features. One example uh, from Ring Central is RED, an ITFRC that describes an audio packet duplication mechanism to fight against packet loss. JITC supported Philip Henke's contribution. We perform extensive lab testing and share also our internal user feedback. RED is now GA in Chrome 96. What if you need to go further? push on the cutting edge by users who want more and more and more AI-based features. You may consider building your own custom Electron, like we do. It, all, it allows Ring Central to have our own desktop capture, run native modules as audio worklets, expose a new API to run native modules to apply video effects and filters in the WebRTC breakout 
box just been described by Harald. And finally, create audio dumps to help us investigate audio issues. All the AI-based features come with a very high price on the CPU and the memory footprint. So you may consider a similar solution as Microsoft Teams announced recently, mixing native code with JavaScript code using a new feature from Windows 10 called WebView 2. On this slide, you can see the comparison, and it's it's not easy to figure out you know, what is really different between one and, and the other. Under the hood, WebView 2 is an instance of Microsoft Edge based on Chromium that has the exact same release cadence. This new approach is very interesting. If your application, just like ours, is a mix of real-time communication features and asynchronous communication, you may have an alternative that allows you to have the best, the best for each of these worlds. Well, on Windows only for now, but looks promising. Cranky Geeks Fall 2021 Weber C event is possible thanks to our sponsors. Ring Central, revolutionize your communications with the Ring Central APIs. Google and WeberC.org supporting web real time communications. Agora, the real time engagement platform. Daily, build communications into any application. Dolby IO, the API of sight and sound. Element, Use the matrix open protocol to support real-time collaboration. Intel, offering a scalable open source media server.